guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video features these two new stamp sets from Picket Fence. These are my own illustrations. Can you see, look, she put my little logo at the top where it says Kelly Taylor Cards. That was such a sweet, like, surprise kind of add-on. I totally love that. So, Nicole, thank you so much. Um, so this is Sweet Holiday, which is the cupcakes, and then um, Candy Cane Christmas. I just wanted to show you, you guys know that I, I like to do this just so you can kind of see where I was coming from in the beginning. This is my sketchbook. Uh, so in the beginning, I was looking at like cookies and suckers um, to kind of add in. I ended up going with a more traditional candy cane and some holly, but these are kind of all of the florals that I kind of drew out to see which ones that I liked. And this one down here in the bottom left um, ended up being kind of the way that we went. We kind of combined that with the one in the middle. Uh, I really love the way that they came out. I hope that you guys do too. Um, so Sweet Holiday, which is the one that has the candy cane, has dyes that, um, or I'm sorry, that has the cupcakes, has dyes that come with it. Uh, it has dyes for all of the sentiments as well. The Candy Cane Christmas, um, which is just the, it's a smaller uh, stamp set and has just the one one large focal point. It does have some snowflakes and stuff with it, um, but this one does not have a die. We're going to stamp this out and then we're going to get right into the coloring. This is a bit of a longer video because um, we're doing two cards, two full cards, and we're going to be talking a lot about metallic accents. Um, but before we get into that, I do need to talk a little bit about some housekeeping. So there was a manufacturer problem. This was not Picket Fence Studios' fault whatsoever, but they actually sent double of one order and then none of the next order for the dies. So if you choose to purchase and you go to the website, you're going to see that the dies for Sweet Holiday are listed as pre-sale. They will have them, I believe, on, on Monday, so tomorrow, um, and then they'll start shipping them out. But if you purchase the stamp and the dies together, they will mail your stamp out right away. They will mail the dies once it is um, in the warehouse at no additional cost to you. So they will pay the shipping to get you your dies. That is why they are listed as pre-sale. It isn't something they had any control over. Manufacturing issues just happen sometimes. Um so yeah, so that's that. Let's talk about the coloring. So it's much easier to shade the whole candy cane in w using my grays for the white because I know that the reds is going to completely cover it up and I won't have to worry about it. Um, so I just shade the whole thing rather than going in and doing each individual um, stripe like I will here with the reds. Because the way the candy cane is drawn that inside edge where the curve is will automatically be darker. And then here where we have some items sitting on top, we have the bow, the holly, things like that sitting on top. Those will also be a little bit darker. And then I'm just going to work my way up um, from my darkest color towards my lightest color. And I'm going to leave the lightest color actually just inside the edge. Um, so that way it's going to create that round appearance do we, we need to have a little bit of dark on kind of the top edge and the bottom edge in order for the highlight to be around the, I don't want to call it a circle, around the arched part. Um, I hope that makes sense. I think it'll make sense once I fill it in. So the highlight is just slightly inside. Um, so that way it just makes it look more round. We will further um, extend that highlight with a white gel pen later on. For the bow, I chose to just stick with that same red combination. So the parts where um, like the detail accents are drawn inside, those are going to have some shading. The underneath of the bow, like where it's making the loop, that's going to be darker. And then the tails are kind of drawn so that they're curled. And so there'll be a little bit of shading in there as well. Um, I really, really love the way that this image came out. I think it's a really good size for coloring. And you know that, like, that's my thing. Like, I don't want I don't want to make stamps that are challenging for you guys to color. I want to make stamps that are going to be something that's nice and easy for you to sit down and enjoy. And um, that it's going to be a pleasure to use, not something that's going to be, like, frustrating to use. So for the highlights on the bow, I am leaving the highlights on the highest part of the... Um, 
what do, what do you call that? The highest part of the bow, bow fold? <laughs> I don't even know. And then the highest part of the center. From here, I'm going to be quite honest with you guys. Um, I was struggling a little bit with how to turn this into a card. And um, sometimes when I struggle, uh, I find that kind of breaking out of my comfort zone for um, color combinations will help me kind of propel forward. So I decided I was going to go with the purple. Now, if you watch my channel, you know purple isn't necessarily like my go-to. And I don't really actually love purple with red. But here's the thing. It's a split complement, um, which means that they do look nice together. So if you have a violet, a, a yellow green, its complement is red violet. We're not using a red violet. We're using the two next to them. So red on one side, violet on the other. And that's why it looks so nice together because they're all, they're, they're a split complementary color. Um, so because I am a little bit limited with my, I, I don't want to say that because honestly, there's so many Kofa color combinations, but when I want a true bright, like magenta violet kind of color, I don't really have a good combination for that. And so here's how I created my own. I'm going to do it with glazing. So originally I thought I would just go in with a, um, with some red violet colors to give myself a base. So I went in with an RV 69 and an RV 66. And then I thought, okay, well I'll just fill in the violet with a VO4. And it didn't look as nice. It looked more of like a blue violet. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a full base coat of the R55. So now the whole flower or flowers are pink. And then I'm going to glaze over top of them with the violet, which is going to make this really, really vibrant um, kind of magenta color, which I totally love. Like, it's such a rich color, and I think it's a little bit unexpected for a Christmas set, um, but that doesn't mean that it's not pretty. And I really like the way that they came out, and it did kind of inspire me, because then from here, I love purple with gold, um, and so that that is what kind of got me moving along the idea of, okay, I could do some metallic accents with this, because I love metallics for Christmas cards. Um here, I'm filling in the berries. I'm just using a VO4 for that. These berries are an accent. They're pretty tiny. There's not a lot of real estate, so I didn't feel like there was any need to shade them. I just filled them in with one whole color, and I think that they're fine. There's two different types of leaves. Well, three, technically three different types of leaves in this set. One of them is the holly. One of them belongs to the hellebores, uh, which is the flowers. And then one of them is just kind of like a filler leaf. And so, but I'm using very similar color combinations. So I went with a true yellow-green combination for my holly. And like I said, this is a split complement. So everything looks really nice together. I wanted the other, I didn't want them all the leaves to be the same color. So I chose some darker, more true greens um, for the leaves that are with the hellebore. Um but I'm going to use my lightest color as a yellow green. So there, it's not going to look like the same color, but it is going to be more of a nod to a yellow green um, instead of a true green green. And again, this is if you don't have as many markers, this is another way that you can kind of extend what you have and get a different look without having to purchase, you know, three or four different marker colors. For the smaller ones, I just went in with... Um, the darkest color and just kind of filled those in. Uh, this is, I think, a G28 or 29. They're honestly pretty similar. I'm going to be honest with you. You probably don't need them both. Um, but I'm just going to fill those in. And then the last little bit of coloring is just to fill in the center. And for that, I'm going to use a Y08. Um, and there's also a little stamen drawn in the uh, smaller, like, side angle flowers. So after I messed around with this for quite a bit of time, you can see I have this whole other panel where I used the, um, I think it's the Snowflake Trio dies, um, and made myself kind of like a little cover plate. Uh, I thought that I was going to use that, but I didn't love it. And like, this is what we talk about when we talk about, you know, like card design and working our way through things. If you don't love it, you don't 
have to just accept, <laughs> like, oh, well, I made it, so, you know, now I have to use it. No, I think that that background is really pretty, and I'll probably use it on another card. I just set it aside. But it's not, it took away from the main focal point. And anything, any kind of background that takes away from your focal point is not one that you want. So I ended up fussy cutting it out. And now this is actually, um, Picket Fence Studios has a ton of shaker frames. And so I'm just using the circle shaker frame to cut a, um, just a, a gold frame circle. And I'm going to use this, this little bit of gold here. I'm going to stack it up on two other ones to give it a little bit more weight. Um, but I'm going to use this as an accent frame. So this is one of the first ways that you can incorporate in a metallic without it taking over is, and it doesn't have to be a circle. The next one's going to be an arch. Um, you could use a square, a rectangle, a diamond, a hexagon, like you could use any of them. I chose to use a circle for this one and I already am loving how that's coming along. I originally thought, well, maybe I would play up the green. That's why you see this kind of like pine color over here. And this piece that I'm adhering it to is trimmed down. It will have a, a mat. Um, so the last release, I think it was the last release, Picket Fence came out with these um, splatters, paper splatters. And this is the gold one. Um, I'm using, this is uh, just a fan brush that they sent me. Um, honestly, I really kind of like the way that it worked. Um so I just picked up some of that. It's already liquid. And then I'm just going to uh, just splatter that on the background. The second way that you can add a metallic accent without it taking over your whole project. Um, here, these are the snowflakes that we talked about from that trio. I had already die cut them. I tried to use them just by themselves, but because I have a white background, they kind of faded into the background. So I decided I was going to add a little bit of ink blending to them to kind of play up that uh, purple. But then I'm also going to add a metallic accent to them. So I'm using the white paper pouncers and I'm just adding some Versamark just in random various spots. And then I'm going to kind of dip these in um, some gold iridescent embossing powder from Hero Arts. I'm just going to dip them in randomly. I'm going to let the gold sit where it sits. If you feel like it's it's too much, you can always just brush it off with a dry paintbrush. It's not permanent until you heat set it. So don't feel like, you know, if you dip it in and it's everywhere, you don't have to go with that. Just, you know, wipe off a wipe off as much or uh, as little as you would like until you're happy. I love the way that these snowflakes came out um, so much, though, that I actually ended up making a bunch more for the second card. But these are just really fun. They're just super fun because they have the metallic accent, but then they also have that little bit of color. Eventually, I did switch over to using my tweezers because I don't have a fingers made out of asbestos. So once those three were done, um, now I'm going to go ahead and just see how much they pop so much more. This is where I was trying out the plum. It's actually eggplant. The eggplant color. Um and it's a scrap piece. Can you see how that bottom corner is missing? I always keep scraps like this just in a, um, like a file on my desk so that I can check them before I have to cut down new paper and, um, you know, maybe cut something that I don't need. If I have something that's sitting there that I can check it with, that then that's what I'm going to do. I wasn't sure about the sentiment for this one, so I ended up heat embossing both of these in gold on black. And so the first one says uh, Candy Cane Christmas, and then the second one says um, Hope Your Holidays Are Sweet. There's a, a bunch of other sentiment sets in here as well. You've got a lot of options. Um and one of them, I mean, even if you're, if it's not, you know, you're just celebrating the holiday season and not necessarily Christmas, there's even one that says like, hi, sweetie, um, that you could send during that time of year um, that's not necessarily holiday related. So I'm going to heat set these and then I'm going to trim them down. I ended up um, really liking the smaller one, the one that was um, longer and you know, when you're doing a design, you don't always know 100% um, what size sentiment is going to work. So I ended up liking this one much better. Um, 
And so that is the one that I chose to go with. Now you can see I have a full piece of the eggplant cardstock. I'm committed to that purple at this point. And um, then that's going to lead us into, uh, well, obviously you can add your metallic accents with your... Um, with your sentiments, with, you know, heat embossing. So that's way three. And then uh, way four, we will get to once we kind of build everything up, and that is with um, embellishments. So rhinestones, uh, sequins, um, anything, you know, the dew drops, like those kind of things, you can add in a metallic that way without it taking over your whole card. Um, to me, like the metallics are, they just feel so much more festive. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys some options for how you could kind of bring them in and not have them overtake your card because metallics can be kind of aggressive. You know, they're meant to be showy. And so sometimes if we use it too much or uh, in a way that's kind of over the top. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Sometimes you want a card that's super fancy and over the top. But if you're looking for a way to add them uh, in a way that is complementary to your focal point, these are just some options that you can try in your card making. So now I'm going to pop up my um, little candy cane. I just cut a bunch of foam pieces to pop this up on because that uh, circle, why couldn't I think of the word circle? Um, because that circle is raised. So I'm just going to add um, a bunch of foam tape here. Um, so that everything will be nice and popped up and solidly adhered to my project. Uh, I did cut them into strips because it just made more sense. Um, they are originally like circle, like pop dots. Um, so I'm going to adhere that down. And then in order to make sure this is flush, I have to put a pop dot just kind of like in the center portion. And then I added some glue to the sides that will sit flush on the candy cane and the circle. And then now we're going to go into adding in the, uh, in this case, the sequins. Um, one of these is called Karma, and I think the other one is Honeybee. Um, I will, you know, guys know that I always link everything below, and then I will be um, adhering these down just with my um, crystal katana and my glue press. For those of you who has asked, I, I see them periodically in the comments about the glue press. Uh, it is really, really easy to use, and oftentimes I end up using too much glue because I forget that I barely need to squeeze the trigger for glue to come out. Um, so that's something that's like a learning curve for me. I'm still adjusting to that. But this is carried uh, in multiple stores by multiple companies, not just uh, My Sweet Petunia. It's carried by Picket Fence. It's carried by Honeybee. Um, you know, and your then your usual ones, your Simon Says Stamp, your scrapbook.com, those kinds of ones. So I added some shimmer, and then I went in with a gel pen and just added those highlights um, that we talked about before. I think that the white gel pen just adds so much. And now we're going to move on to the actual cupcake. Um, this one is a little bit, because like there's a lot in there, a lot of decoration in there. There's actually two cupcakes in this set. And the other one doesn't have anything to do with Christmas. It just has the florals on it. Because you guys know I love I love versatile things. And I don't want to just, I don't want to invest in something that I'm only going to be able to use one time a year. And it's just going to be a one-trick pony. So it was really important to me to include another cupcake that you could use literally whenever. And in this... Um, in this stamp set, there is also a happy birthday sentiment. So, you know, you could use that other cupcake um, for just any time of year. Like I said, I have another idea with it. That is why I didn't include it in this video because I will be doing a whole other video with just um, just that cupcake. And I think it's going to be super fun. Um, as far as coloring the cupcake liners, when you look at the cupcake liner, you can see that there's some areas that are drawn recessed and some areas that are drawn raised. You want to put your shadows in the recessed areas and your highlight should be your raised areas. I chose to do mine kind of like a silver um, style cupcake wrapper and then I did um, a vanilla cupcake and chocolate frosting. Um, 
but you can do any combination that you want, like just any any combination that makes your heart happy. Um, I The girls, uh, well, I shouldn't say that because I don't know that their design team is all girls. I think that there's some boys on there too. The design team, period, for Picket Funds, totally killed this. Um, to see all of the different takes on the, the stamp set just made my heart so happy and just made me like so grateful to God to be able to put these images out there for people to use and to send other people joy. It just, it really, um, it really just made my heart so happy. Let's talk about this. So these are kind of a little bit smaller images. So I'm not going to take the time to detail out the candy cane like I did before. Same thing with the berries. I just picked uh, one of the midtones. Uh, you could use an R35 if you want it to be brighter. I went with an R29. And I'm just going to fill these in in their entirety. Honestly, I, you're probably not even going to notice because there's going to be so much detail coloring in the other things that those one layer ones isn't really going to stand out. So for the cupcake, I wanted to do a vanilla cupcake, but I wanted it to look like, you know, it was baked. <laughs> Nobody wants a raw cupcake. Um, and so I chose um, some warmer browns and I'm going to go in and shade it first. And then I'm going to go in and add just a little bit of texture with some stippling. The darkest color stippling will go where I want the shadows to be. Um, and then the mid-tone and the lightest color will be just all over. Because if you lay a lighter color of an alcohol marker over a darker color, it does lift it. And this creates a bunch of different tones. Um, but the color combination for this one is going to be the same. The only addition will be, obviously, we don't have the snowflake in the first one or the frosting. Um, I... I don't know, chocolate frosting is just my go-to, probably because in life, like, if I have an option of a cupcake, I want it to have chocolate, fr <laughs> I want it to have chocolate frosting, I don't, I don't want vanilla frosting, though I will take a cream cheese, um, but anyway, so, I just went in, I followed, I followed the lines the illustrator drew, that's hysterical, Kelly, I followed the lines that I drew, um, to, give the uh, frosting some shape and some shading. And so I am adding some darks, especially back behind this um, snowflake. I'm just filling this in with the darkest color. There's no reason to kind of go in there and try to shade anything at all. Um, it would be, it's, there's no purpose to it. I'm just going to fill it in with the darkest color um, because the snowflake is going to take the attention in that area. So I don't, I'm not really overly worried about it. Um, and it would just be very, very challenging to do shading over there. And it's just not necessary. So now I'm going to move on to my next mid-tone and I'm going to start extending out the darker color. Um, careful around my uh, little sprinkles. But even then, if you color over the sprinkles, like you can go in with a zero marker or you can just go in with a white gel pen. Um, which you guys know that eventually I am also going to do that because I can't stop myself. <laughs> I have to add the detail work. I just, I cannot stop myself. Um, so as far as life goes, what have we been up to? I feel like we've been so busy with videos. Like there's so many. Um, but yesterday I was laying Caitlin down for her little nappy and 40s just apparently really catching up with me because I went to go lay her down and I tweaked my back. <laughs> I tweaked my back. Um, I'm not even really sure. Like, I don't even know really how it happened, but it happened. And so last night and today my back has been a little bit like, oof, as Caitlin would say, I have a boo-boo. Um, so, uh, this morning we were going to go to church, um, and I just, I was like, dude, I can't rustle her around a, a pew. Like, I just can't do it. So, fortunately, um, the church that we started going to actually offers um, service online. Like, they stream it. So, we watched, um, we watched from home today, uh, and so that was good. It's crazy. You know, like... When your child, when your child is with you, when you are trying to pay attention in church, um, 
it's like you catch bits and pieces. You know what I'm saying? Just just bits and pieces. Uh, that was the best I could do because she's, you know, she's wild. And like yes, or last week when we were actually in church, um, it was kind of the the same thing where you know, she's just little. And yes, they have a nursery, but we haven't been going to this church long enough for us to be comfortable in putting her in the nursery. Um, so, you know, we just try to distract her to the best of our ability. Sometimes we're good at it. Sometimes we're not. Um, obviously, if like she's crying or anything like that, like we would, we would take her out into the hallway. We're not trying to interrupt everybody else's, um, service but uh today it was just us in our own house and it was it was a challenge <laughs> um but i have been doing a heating pad my husband keeps trying to get me to use this uh, gel that he has but like my my husband likes super intense things so it's not even like icy hot it's like super extra intense icy hot and like i i can't get behind that like your girl can't do it so I've just been doing um, ibuprofen and a heating pad, and here's hoping that it'll slowly but surely get better. Um, so now the uh, for the sprinkles, I, I'm doing the same thing I did with the berries. I'm just filling them in with the VO4. I'm not adding any shading at all. Um, here I realized that I missed a little stripe area for my cupcake. Um Sometimes it's easier to see those things after the fact. Once you start coloring the larger items around them, it's easier to see where the details should be. The greens, like everything is the same. Color palette is is totally the same as the first cupcake. This one has very few leaves from the um, hellebore. It just has three. It has a lot more holly and it has none of the uh, kind of like filler leaves. I definitely felt like when I was drawing it that the cupcake had enough going on. It didn't need any help from my filler. <laughs> it didn't need any help from my filler leaves. Um, but I have wanted to do these cupcakes for so long, you guys. For so, so long. Um, I originally started with a, what was it? A Valentine's Day cupcake, I think, is what I started with, like, last year. Yeah, I think it was last year. And, like, I then I did an Easter one that I did. And so, um, I just never, they just never went anywhere. Like, these were just my own drawings. And, um, so to finally be able to put one out there and to have them well received, like I am just over the moon that um, they seem to be um, something that you guys are enjoying. So for the snowflake, I just went with some cooler blues, blue greens. I am going to go in and just kind of bolster up that highlight with a white gel pen. This is really going to push it forward and help it to shine. Um, I'm going to add the same details that I did before to the center of the flowers, to the candy cane, to the bow, um, all of those things. And then this one I am, because there's coordinating dyes, I am going to go ahead and die cut this out. And then... Once again, we're going to get back into the um, the making of the card. So I have some more of that uh, eggplant cardstock. Here I decided to do arches. This was actually a leftover plate because you guys know I'm cheap. I'm not throwing it away. Um, a leftover piece of gold cardstock that I had. For these, I'm using infinity dies. So I'm just going to fit them into each other and they're going to cut out a frame. Any sort of layering dies like this that you have, um, Spellbinders has some, Hero Arts has some, um, a lot of companies have them. Any of those that you have, just tape two together and you should be able to get a good size frame. I also did the Merry Christmas same way. I heat embossed them in gold on black. I cut out a couple of more frames just like I did with the first one so that I could stack it up and give it some weight and some thickness. Um, that's just going to help it be more of a presence in the card. Um, so I'm just gluing those together. And then here you can see more of those uh, snowflakes. How pretty are those snowflakes? I mean, I just love them. I think I think we're going to have to revisit them on another card, maybe with another combination. But that gold, that addition of that gold with the um, ink blending almost makes them look iridescent on their own, which I think is super, super cool. So here I'm just laying out my snowflakes 
So, and I did this a bunch of times off screen. I mean, honestly, I did so that I could get them down to how I wanted them to look. So I'm going to have an odd number. I'm going to have two in one corner and three in the other corner. Um, so that way they have a nice flow with the card. And obviously then the cupcake will be the focal point. Um, but these are just some accents, you know, that, that we're, we're adding in. I did let them overhang the white mat um, so that they went all the way to the edge. That just creates a little bit more interest so that the design continues to flow and it doesn't just end where the card stock ends, um, which is a, just a really easy way to, like I said, to create more interest. And I did find the easiest way to adhere these down was using my tweezers. Um, so yeah, so my back's, my back's a little bit boo-boo, um, but so far it doesn't seem to be interfering with, it's, I just can't really lift anything, which kind of is problematic, honestly, when you have a almost two-year-old, you know, because she wants to be upped a lot. Um, and then putting her in her crib or laying her down in her pack and play to change her is challenging. Um, not so much the doing like once she's in there like the changing is not so much challenging it's the bending over to get her in um or picking her up because it is in like the small of my back so all of those muscles get used when I go to lift her and they don't like it you know what's also really hard sneezing yeah because it takes you by surprise and it's very painful when it happens <laughs> but you can't stop it uh so yeah good times good times so now once those are in place, I'm going to go ahead and then put my um, arch down. You could also, if you wanted to, you could do more of those like gold splatters. I liked the clean look of the eggplant color. So I just left that there. Um, I really like the way that this one came out. I know, I know I said that about the other one too. Honestly, I like them both. Um, I am going to go in and pop up this particular cupcake um, and then put that down kind of in the center of my arch. My uh, candy cane will overhang. That's no big deal. And then I'll put the sentiment below. Um, so I'm excited to see what you guys think of these, um, whether or not I, somebody had commented, which was really sweet because I had shared them in the community tab yesterday. Uh, she was like, I saw these on the new release page over at uh, Simon Says Stamp. She was like, when I saw them, I was like, oh, Kelly would probably love these and color these, but she didn't know that I had drawn them. Uh, and she was right. Like, they're totally my style because they, well, because they're mine <laughs> because they're my style. Um so, uh, yeah, I'm just super excited to see what everybody, it's always, I don't know, it's always like super humbling to see, you know, people use your ideas that you created, uh, and to make the beautiful cards and just, I don't know, it just makes me super happy and so grateful. Um, so now I've laid out my rind or my, um, my sequins again, they're like the golden colors or the holographic ones. And I'm going to go through and just adhere those down as well to kind of continue that diagonal. And then, um, that's that's it. That's the last step. Those are both cards. So thank you guys so much for joining me. You know, I always appreciate your time. Um, you, you guys are so supportive and I'm just so very grateful to have you. So thank you again and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.